I'll take you the rest of the way when you've had your drink. This is a very exotic room. A very secret room, too. Secret? Because nobody knows it's here. Especially your wife. That's right. I keep it for uh, special occasions, like this. After all, when you got into the car, you knew you were going to get more than a lift into town. True. I was promised a drink. And so far, I have been disappointed. <laughs> I never allow anyone to be disappointed. Turn out the light, will you? Are you ready? Close your eyes. I'm going to surprise you. Oh, yes? Are you ready for this? Carbon copy, isn't it? Well, I didn't examine the other body, but uh, the description is certainly the same. Heart cut out with a bill hook or curved cutting tool. Sam, hmm? any sign the geezer was bent? There's no frilly knickers in the cupboard. Oh, come on. Photographs, letters, club membership, stuff like that. You think it's a homosexual feeling? He said there were signs of sexual activity. Yes. Or well, do you think a woman could have done that? Well, it's physically possible for a young, fit woman. Or someone in an abnormal state of mind. There's this one, Dallas Room. Kind of singles bar, hetero place there. Find out if he was there last night, who he was with, who his friends are, if he left with anyone, all right? Mm. Turn. Mm. Keep it quiet. Well, last week I thought we were dealing with some kind of insane one off. Now we've got two of a kind. Which brings me to my next guest, who must be one of the most beautiful, no, definitely the most beautiful lady writer we've ever had on The Breakfast Show, Natalie Bell. But her story, or at least the book she's having published soon, could be one to spoil your breakfast, so be warned. It's an amazing story. It's difficult to believe that it really does have a basis in fact. So tell me, Natalie. Oh, yeah. She was really nice. I found out quite a lot about her and her family. I even traced one of its surviving members. Extraordinary. How on earth did you manage to do that? Well, I know exactly what you mean, and I'm sure you're going to send a lot of our listeners out looking around their local old bookshops to see what they can find. A gruesome story. The crazy countess who cut out her lover's hearts with a dagger. Ugh. No such ripping yarns from my next guest. But before that, to change the mood, a record for Peter Rawley of Hounslow Middlesex. <laughs> Hello. Uh, could you put me through to the uh, production office, please, on the breakfast show? Detective Inspector Clifford. Thank you. We're not releasing any details about the killings. What I've told you is just between the two of us, but as you can see, they're both exactly the same as you describe in uh, your book about the Countess. 
Well, I wouldn't say exactly the same. And the Countess lived 300 years ago, remember? Yeah. You said you'd trace one of her descendants. And you decided it runs in the family. I haven't decided anything. So, what do you want me to do? Introduce you to Mrs. Hansker? That's right. Well, it'll be easier on her if there's someone there she knows. I'll call her later this afternoon. She usually sleeps after lunch. Then we'll see. Let me give you some advice. When you talk to Mr. Hansen... I won't be doing any talking. I'll be listening. No. To tell you the truth, I have become obsessed with this ancestor of mine. Why? God knows. I cannot imagine a more monstrous woman. She seems to have been a perfectly ordinary run-of-the-mill countess until her husband went away to the Hundred Years' War. His head, Falconer, gave to her a baby eagle. And I have to say, this is not all he gave her. So, when the Count returned, the Falconer, not being a courageous man, fled to escape his vengeance, but for the Countess, there was no such escape. The Count punished her infidelity with much cruelty. He had her dragged on a cart through the whole valley and displayed in all the villages where the headman gave to her a ritual blow. And then, at night, by the light of torches in front of the assembled people, she was branded with iron as an adulteress. But the Count had not lost his desire for her. In fact, the inflicting of this cruel humiliation seems to have quickened it. He locked her up in a tower, but he could not keep away from her. Every night he visited her. She submitted to him silently and waited. And then, one night, she opened wide the shutters on the window of the tower. The moonlight flooded in on the sleeping Count. And then, suddenly, a shadow falls across him. A vast shadow. And into the room swoops the Countess's eagle. He is fully grown now. For a second, he hovers over the sleeping man, and then there is a fierce, rushing sound as down swoops the vicious beak. For a second, a split second, the Count wakes before he dies, his heart ripped out by the eagle. So, the Countess now rules the whole valley. She goes out into all the villages, and she selects young men to be her lovers, yes? She takes them back to the tower, but before his night is over, each one of them dies, his heart ripped out. It was not until her death that they discovered all the bodies. There were 107 of them. Would you like more tea? Uh, no, 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 thank you. Well... It's an incredible story. Uh, is it very well known? No, as a matter of fact, it is not. Naturally, it had some currency in our part of the country, but gradually it dropped out of sight until the 1830s, when people liked that sort of horror story. And then it was published in a book of Carpathian folk tales and then translated into German and English and so on. Which is how I came across it. Um, Mrs. Hansker, how many in your family now? In the family? Mm. Oh. <laughs> I am the family. I am the Countess's last descendant. Well, that is why I was so pleased when Natalie came to see me. Our family may die out, but our grisly story will continue. Mm. And there's uh, no possibility that there's um, a cousin, a, a grandson. No. No, I have no grandson. I see. Well, uh, it's been a 
tremendous experience listening to you, but uh, I, well, I, I don't want to tire you. That is very considerate of you. Uh, I would like to call again sometime, if I may. Yes, yes. Speak to Natalie. She will arrange. I'll telephone you. Thank you. What are you going to do now? I'll drive you home. I met. Oh. Well. Uh, I'd like the name and address of your publisher and the typing agency you use, and uh, anyone you know of who might have seen the manuscript. You don't really think it could have put the idea into someone's head? According to Mrs. Hansker, the last time the story was current was uh, the 1830s. Your book hasn't been published yet, so it's a possibility, however remote. It's an alarming thought. Something I've written may have led to someone's death. Well, as I said, it's uh, a remote possibility. But it's one I have to check. Daddy! They're gone. I'm not. Why do you cover it? So beautiful. Sometimes I prefer not to see it. Tadek, are you going out? Because I have some work to do. My name's Andy. What's yours? I'm not interested in uh, names. What a beautiful voice. You know, you should be doing commercials for caviar. Oh, yes? <laughs> I can never resist the challenge of dark glasses. Would you like me to take them off? Oh, there's no answer to that. <laughs> there. I just bet myself a bottle of Mouton Cadet I could make you laugh. Now I've won, and you've got to share it with me. You want references? And don't look now, but check the glamorous lady behind the bar. She's the owner's wife. Ask her about Randy Andy. And uh, that's you. Andy's the name, Randy's the game. Look, I have to be careful. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what we do. I'll go and wait in the car. You leave it for ten minutes, and then come and join me. It's parked in the mews. A red Porsche. And what then? Time of your life, sweetheart. I see a tantalizing glimpse of things to come. Stay where you are. I'm on my way. Anything you say. Close your eyes, Randy Andy. <sighs> Keep your eyes closed till I say. Now. And you actually saw the lady leave. And she left with the gentleman.
never seen her here before. No, oh, this is Detective Inspector Clifford. This is oh. Mrs. Van Lely. She was behind. And the killing could have been done by three different women. The descriptions were never the same. I don't think it's possible. All right, they look different, but that only means uh, change of clothes, a wig. Then it could have been a man. Yeah, yes, it could. But it's why that interests me. I mean, what drives anyone to this particular kind of killing? Wouldn't you say there was some kind of ritual element? The fact that they all seem to be identical. Yeah. But where does the ritual come from? Somewhere deep down in the unconscious mind. Well, I know about the unconscious mind. You could write on a cigarette paper. Then you'd better come and see my psychiatrist with me. It's not for treatment. He's an old friend. He calls in on me now and then. And you, uh, help him with his problems? He helps me with my research. Maybe he can help with yours. Mm. Just as the personal unconscious contains buried images and memories of the early stages of our lives, so the collective part of the unconscious mind is a great store of material from the early stages in the life of mankind. And this is common to all of us. That's why you or I can dream the same dream as the Australian Aborigine. We all have buried images of man as the amiable fruit gatherer, as well as the predatory hunter, the dark side, the wolf within us. Like an iceberg, the unconscious mind is the nine-tenths below the surface. I don't like that analogy. It suggests that the unconscious is some dark, destructive force lurking below the surface and waiting to sink the unsuspecting titanic of our aspirations. But isn't that what we're dealing with? A submerged destructive force? Are you trying to say that Mrs. Hanska is some kind of Lady Dracula who survived by devouring the hearts of young men? Could it be possible for some traumatic event that happened a, a long time ago to re-emerge generations later? Hmm. You mean buried in the unconscious as if in the family vault and then suddenly under the right conditions reproduced? I don't think so. I think you should examine parallel case histories, thinking in terms of the multiple personality. Like the Boston Strangler? Yes. Someone who, to all intents and purposes, leads a thoroughly unremarkable life, and yet who, at given times, becomes a totally different person, with characteristics wholly unlike his or her other self. In this case, murderous characteristics. And, of course, each of these personalities knows nothing of the other. There's no will involved here. But, but, as you said, the wolf takes over. If you insist on the romantic imagery, the wolf takes over. Or, in this case, the eagle. Possibly. It would be useful to know more about the family background. My research notes on the family are pretty extensive. Would you like to read them? Yes. Yes, I would. But I ought to be getting back. Um, could I possibly borrow? They're with my typist just now. Well, thank you for talking to me, Doctor. Thanks, Natalie. Help yourself to a drink. Oh, thanks, I will. Clip. Can you uh, get some time off tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow evening, around about 6.30. I'll be getting my notes back during the day. Oh, well, uh, maybe we could meet for a drink and then have some dinner. All right. At the pub with the garden, about 7 o'clock. See you at 7. Is he still there? Yeah, he left about 25 minutes ago. Didn't stay long. Right, I've got the embassy checking for me. When I find out what they've got, I'll be in touch. Roger, Dodge. Roger, Dodge, I'll still be here.
very good look at him. Better than that. I had a bit of difficulty getting that one. But he didn't see me. Do you know who he is? A fair idea. Is that tea? No, it's coffee. That'll do. Somehow I get the feeling Mrs. Hansky's not going to offer me a cup of tea today. Not an eagle in sight. <laughs> I haven't found the right one yet. Now, you want to hear more stories of my family? Yes, as a matter of fact. I will tell you the story of how I escaped from the Russians with the help of an English captain. I found myself in a displaced person's camp in I'd England. like you to tell me about your nephew. What nephew? I have no nephew, I told you. I am the last of the Countess's family. Except the Tadek. No. Which Tadek? Who is Tadek? Tadek Kuczynski. No. No, I won't listen to you. He was with the Radzinski Theatre Company in Warsaw. They were having a successful tour of East Germany. He managed to escape to the West. He turned up in this country last year. You must go away. Mrs. Hansker, there's no point in denying it. It's not going to help either one of you. Don't you think he suffered enough? Persecuted by that atheistic regime of Marxist bullies. He cannot help being what he is. Yes, he escaped, but he is still surrounded by unthinking people who do not understand what he is doing. That is why I have not disclosed his presence. There has been enough of persecution. Tadek is an artist. As such, he must be free to express himself. And how exactly does he do that? How I wish it was the same. Much better, I suppose. Shouldn't really feel this way, but that's how it goes. Or unlucky me, but that's the way it's got to be. So tell me, what can I do? Yes, I've got a thing about you. Mr. Tarnik Kuczynski, I'd like to ask you a few questions. do is have a chat. You should have said you were police. You might have lost your temper. I'm sorry. I thought you were a spy or a journalist. I'm glad I'm not. I suppose you're from the immigration. How did you find me? Auntie. My aunt would not give me away. I promised her I wasn't trying to get you deported. No? No. It's more serious than that. I'm investigating a murder. Three murders, in fact. And I simply want to know where you were when they happened. So, I am suspect. Now, don't get excited. It's only routine. All right, I did it. Come on, Tony. Don't be temperamental. I'm not temperamental. What I am is sick of being hunted and pursued and persecuted. I understand. Things haven't been easy for you. Auntie told me about your problems, and I said I'd try and help, you know. Straighten things out with the immigration people. You did? Why not? I'm not in the business of making life difficult. People with talent need encouraging. You were very good out there. Thank you. I'm not much used to kindness from officials. But you do have to help. Of course. I was working most nights these last few weeks. I have a very full date book. And when I'm not working, I'm staying with my aunt. She, she will... 
How do you say it? Prove this. Yeah, well, um, we're gonna have to do better than that, aren't we? Maybe the best thing would be for you to come to my office tomorrow morning, near the police station, Nils Road. It would give you time to remember exactly what you were doing over the last three weeks, whether you were out of town, working, or whatever, okay? And I'm gonna need some kind of corroboration. Names of people who saw you, contracts, that sort of thing. Do you think you can handle that? Yes. That's the way. And remember, no one is leaning on you, and I will make sure that they don't, just as long as you show up tomorrow morning. I'll be there. Good boy. How do you get on? Bit of aggravation. Oh, with Queenie? You're still thinking in cliches, old son. Tarek's a hard lad. He's also very nervous. But is he the eagle woman? Or do you still believe Auntie does a transformation number? No, I don't know. Who's watching the house? DC Wilson. All right, I'll take over. Now, make sure Tardik doesn't know he's being followed. He's very excitable and he's liable to... Let uh... fly with his handbag. You just stop being funny, Sergeant. Now, stay out of sight. Oh, you've got trouble. I'm trying to find the Heathcliff Gallery. You've passed it. If you make a U-turn here, you'll see it on your left, about a hundred meters back. That's awfully kind of you, but I must be honest, the Heathcliff Gallery was a pretext. I simply had to speak to him. Oh, really? Yes, truly. I know it's a very sexist thing to do to intrude on a lady's privacy just because she happens to be beautiful. What can I say to commend myself to you? I'm terribly rich, and I live five minutes away. What is this? A proposal? Proposition is the word, I think. Look, why don't you just drop round for a cup of tea? There's an earl living next door. It's a tremendously respectable neighborhood. Now, don't let me down. The moment I clapped eyes on you, I said to myself, I must have that girl, whatever it costs. I'm busy. You won't get a better offer this afternoon, my love. You're probably right. You don't live here, then? Not exactly, no. I'm borrowing it from friends. Jolly pretty, though, isn't it? I've given the indoor servants the evening off, and the chauffeur's having tea with his mother-in-law, so we shan't be disturbed. Are you getting ready? Come and get me. I want you to lie down and close your eyes. Are you going to be strict with me? I'm going to surprise you. Close your eyes. Now, are you ready for this? Yes.
everything in Chadwick's statement checks, except the time it was with a Mrs. Hansker. There's no way we can ever find out if he's really there or not. Only one of the killings happened when he said he was with Auntie. And she never left the house. Don't you think your theory's looking a bit shaky? What theory? I'll call in later to let you know where I'll be. You're on till 10, aren't you? Yeah. He doesn't leave us with anything, though, does he? Don't you think it's time he went public, released the details? No. You couldn't play this down. It'd be big news. Next time you pick up a beautiful girl, don't take her to your place. Bring her here. Let's keep it to ourselves for as long as we can, eh? I'd uh, better call the police, sir. Oh, I don't think I'd bother with that, really. After all, she didn't actually take anything. They'd only ask a lot of boring questions. Besides, I don't want to run the risk of upsetting my wife if she got to hear about it. Still, it's pretty serious, sir. I mean, she must be a loony. Yes, well, then. Uh... We don't want the Thompsons to know I've been entertaining loonies in their absence, do we? Uh, I live over there. Fancy coming over for some coffee? Why not? That's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, I fancy you, you fancy me. Why mess about? Come on, turn your back. careful about my landlady. She's got a bit of a thing about visitors. Come on. I'll be at home the rest of the evening if you need me, OK? Hold on. It's 11th Avenue right away, north side of the park. It's another one. On my way. in what I was doing yesterday. What was happening? Research for the new book. Well, it wasn't even research, really, just thinking about the story and how I'm going to tackle it. It's always like that, I'm afraid. Once I get an idea for a story, it seems to take over my whole life. Well, I was, uh... I was a bit surprised when you didn't turn up, but then 
I thought maybe you'd said yes just to be polite. I wouldn't do that. I'm very clear about yes and no. That's good. Now you're here. Stay for dinner? Uh, well, I've come straight from work. Oh, Cliff, you don't have to get changed, for goodness sake. There's the bathroom. Help yourself. Then you can start reading my notes on the Countess's family. That's an offer I can't refuse. No, you carry on. I'm just going out to get something to drink. I'll get it. No, it won't take a minute. The shop's only in the high street. Well, tell me what you want. Go on. Risk it. If I get lost, I'll ask a policeman. Some white wine? Some white wine. know enough now about the killings to have figured out the way she works. And when you didn't turn up yesterday and that fellow was killed, well, you had to be the number one suspect. That's a good... Well... Thank God that's over. Look, Natalie... Don't speak to me! Don't look at me! Get out of here! All of you! I suppose you think you can justify this with some official jargon or a warrant. What happened to me in there was filthy. It was like being raped. Don't say You don't want to hear it, do you? You were just doing your job. I didn't want to do this, but there was no way I could avoid it. I admire your self-sacrifice, Inspector. Don't bother to say you're sorry, because it really doesn't matter. Hey, she really gave you a hard time. You still ain't got your proof now. Yesterday you hoped it wasn't her. Today you know it isn't. So it's goodbye forever now, is it? Are you a 
arresting me? I wanted to explain. There's no need. I understand perfectly. I was the suspect, you were the smart cop playing me along. That's not how it was. I knew it couldn't be you, but I'm, I'm not just me. I'm in charge of the investigation, and I needed proof. You managed to find the most brutal way to get your proof, didn't you? I didn't want it to be like that. I, I didn't want to run the risk of spoiling our relationship, but sometimes I have to take risks. All right, you took the risk. And what you are pleased to call our relationship is spoiled. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be spiteful. I was hitting back at you. Do you have the time to talk somewhere? I'll be amazed if you have. I'm making the time. This is important. Yes. Yes, it is. My car's over there. Why don't I drive you home? Look, look, I've got a better idea. Why don't I invite you to my place and make you some lunch? I'm an ace cook. Maybe I can impress you. I have some more shopping to do. Give me an hour. I'll be there. You seem, uh, different. No. I've simply decided not to be angry anymore. Good. Life's too short. And we shouldn't waste our time. What do you think? I think we can eat later. sense of occasion? No. I want to surprise you. Stop surprising me. I won't be long. Anthony. I'm almost ready. Close your eyes. I'm on my way. Keep your eyes closed. job to do. I wish I'd been more understanding. I thought perhaps maybe he would have tried to phone you, put things right. Perhaps he meant to. I don't know. 
Now the story's out, we get a hundred crazies a day phoning in. Same of the Eagle. How did Cliff find her, I wonder? He didn't tell you? No. Kept it to himself. Went off on his own. First time he'd ever done that. Well, come see the lads. some journalist scum. He got hold of a photograph of her and sold it to the television. Thanks. She saw her face on the screen when the story came out. She got an obsession. An obsession that she's some kind of reincarnation of the Countess. So now she's terrified of sleep because she thinks she walks in her sleep but kills. That's why I have to stay with her. You're looking after her now? What else can I do? Oh, I had some spectacular offers. A tour of the stage with my own show. Jackie the Ripper. Some producer tried to force me to accept. I break his head. We've mm. got a visitor. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. You haven't moved from your chair. You have been here the whole time. Of course I have. But don't worry. Say hello to Natalie. How are you, Mrs. Hansker? What have we done, you and I? Nothing, nothing. You're upset because of the news. Of course you are. But you've done no one any harm. You didn't choose your ancestor. But she chose me. She lives in me. What am I to do? This is just your imagination. You've been on your own too long, with too many gloomy thoughts. But now you have Tadek to take care of you. You'll be feeling much better, believe me. Natalie, stay with us, even for a few days. It would be so good to have your company. We, we could become real friends. I'd like to, Tadek, but I've begun researching my new book, and it's going to take me a long way away. I think she'd make an interesting subject. Well, she wasn't a sister. Just uh, one of the nurses. Did you ever see her? No, she was before my time. That would have been 1920 something. <laughs> Mind you, my uh, my old governor saw her. <laughs> we saw her, all right. <laughs> she used to like <clears throat> flaunt her body kind of thing when she was up close to uh, them rich old boys. I wanted to summon them to have a heart attack there and then. Of course, they'd ask her to come to their room, but she always said no. Wait until you leave, she said, and then you can take me to a flat. Well, these rich old boys was the kind who'd set up a nice-looking girl in a little love nest somewhere, so that was no trouble. She got the meeting out of her hand, so to speak, buying her fur coats and cars and diamonds and all that. Then when they starts to look around for a bit of something new... She'd strangle them with a silk scarf. Hmm. <laughs> You were uh, going to do a television about her? A book, actually. I think she'd make an interesting subject, don't you? Well, it's not much of a job for a lady, but uh, there you are. No one's throttling all them old boys. <laughs> she wasn't a sister, just uh, one of the nurses. <laughs> 